You're welcome back. It's still TVC Breakfast and it's uh, talk time. We will continue with our focus on South Africa's new rating as the biggest economy in Africa, a position Nigeria once occupied. On now, Monday. Hey, certainly. Yes. Uh, on <laughs> no, tell us what happened on Monday. On Monday, we reviewed the issue of rebasing of the economy, which is one of the factors that was used to determine the rating. Now, uh, let me tell you what happened on Tuesday. Mm. And on Tuesday, which was the next day, we analyzed critical sectors of the South African economy that gave the country a shoot ahead of Nigeria and Egypt. Now, today we'll be looking at Nigeria's manufacturing sector. Mm. Uh, what does Nigeria produce for exports? It's one question we pitched earlier on when we are starting the program. And uh, does the country really manufacture any product good enough for export? It's one of the things we'll talk about. Yes, indeed. And that's our talk time. And we're joined now by an investment consultant, Dr. Ikenna Mwosu. He's a council member of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry and also a member of the Nigeria South Africa Chamber of Commerce. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, so um, last year, UNIDO, uh, country rep in Nigeria, said that the, the, the bane of Nigeria's economy is rooted in its dwindling manufacturing uh, sector. That's correct. I had a good laugh when I, when I heard that. Hmm. It's, it's almost sounding like um, we keep beating the same drum every year. The manufacturing, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria has shouted itself over us, government after government. Same problems, same recovery decimal. The manufacturing sector in this country contributes just about 10% to the national gross domestic product. Hmm. In South Africa, it's about 13.3% of their GDP. South mm -hmm. Africa's GDP now is about $301 billion. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is about $296, $296. billion. Mm -hmm. And primary reason why South Africa overtook Nigeria, their currency gained about 16% above the dollar, the rand, while the Nigerian Naira lost about one third of its value when mm -hmm. the CBN removed the currency exactly. pegs. So our gains have been made in 2014. We've lost most of it. Now, note something. You know, in 2014, when our economy was rebased in January, and Nigeria became the largest economy, that was the same year we hosted the 24th World Economic Forum for Africa. The plot for Nigeria, that was the mm. first time in the, as at that date, the 24th edition, Nigeria was hosting it for the first time, but South Africa has hosted it 17 times. Wow. And that is the biggest event in the world on the economic side where you have public and private sector come, the richest men in the world. Mm -hmm. So any country that hosts that event in, 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 in its, in its, within its walls, within its borders, it is, it is a, a good mark, a plus. You are being endorsed as the preferred investment destination. Mm -hmm. So that's why you find that most of the global players have their regional office to Africa, their regional headquarters in South Africa. Because South Africa's economy has consistently, for 17 years, been endorsed as the right place to do the business. Mm. Nigeria had that once in 2014, and then you saw the inflow of business in that year, adding add, add to the rebasing. Mm. Now, one year after that, okay, two years down the line, one year of the new government, we're having a reverse. South Africa is not overtaking Nigeria. Mm. And people are asking, what did we get wrong? Since we're focusing on manufacturing, you ask yourself, what's Nigeria doing wrong that South Africa is getting right? Indeed. It was actually a question. Exactly. It was, it was a big question yesterday. We asked. <laughs> Interesting. And I, I laugh and I say, look, Nigeria is getting so many things wrong. First of all, our business climate is very, very unfriendly. Hmm. That's the truth. Our, look at the ease of doing business index. It's abysmal. On the global ranking, South Africa is 49. We are above the 100 mark. The 170 something. Exactly. Okay. So, where is the base of comparison? We are trying to chase South, South Africa takes 24% of Africa's GDP. Mm. In Nigeria, manufacturing companies are complaining that there's multiple taxation at federal, state, and local levels at every, on, uh, on every point of the supply chain. They flatter themselves who to the Joint Tax Board, to the Inland Revenue, to the Minister of Finance. Could you please streamline these taxes because mm. they're overwhelming. Okay, look at what happened with the Stan Standard Bank, Stan Big IBTC mm. issue, when they had the FRC issue. 
regulators in this country, regulatory agencies, have for some time positioned themselves as adversaries to the organized private sector. Yes, you're a regulator, but the essence of regulation is so that the economy will grow. Mm. So when that happened, the South Africans who are investors in some big IBTC and who own Standard Bank, what do you think they will, will think about? You can't remit your, your profits? Who is going to bring this money in if you can't take it out? You look at the foreign airlines having 574 billion naira oh, since June last year. They can't take it out of the country. A number of them have stopped flying. The manufacturers again are saying, look, we don't even have access roads to the port to get our cargo out. We are not talking infrastructure challenges. Hmm. You don't have access to the ports. The port roads are bad. Many of the ports are not in 24 hours. Some are doing, some of the, big, the biggest ones. Hmm. However, you have the fast track facility you've put in place by the Nigerian Customs Service. Now we are finding that the Customs wants to cut back on some of those fast track aspects because the field is one or two people abuse it. If one or two abuse it, it doesn't mean that everybody hmm. is bad. Hmm. So, in a space of three and a half weeks, Last month, the Nigeria Customs Service increases the exchange rate for calculating import duty from 197 naira to a dollar to 282 naira to a dollar to 313 naira to a dollar in three and a half weeks. Wow. Check out the percentage mm. increase. And then, if it's for a company that's importing raw material for manufacturing, how does it tell on your balance sheet? Oh. Wow. That then. Of course, the national question of power. All right, we'll, we'll come to we'll come to look at all of these because these are indices generally. When you talk about ideal business climates generally, mm -hmm. doing business, we'll come to that so we can understand in practical terms because you were reeling them out. I, I guess there are so many other areas we have to talk about. Now, Nigeria's economic growth is driven by a number of sectors, including oil and gas, solid minerals, agriculture, and manufacturing. Prior to the oil boom of the 1970s, manufacturing contributed approximately 10% uh, to Nigeria's economic output. Increased revenues from oil caused the sector's relative gross domestic product GDP share to decline. Now, this has dealt a significant blow on the manufacturing industry. Let's take a look at what Nigeria manufactures. Now, major manufacturing industries include uh, industries in rubber, wood, textiles, food products, footwear, chemicals, fertilizer, printing, ceramics, steel, shipbuilding and repairs, cement and other construction materials. Now, despite this, importation of manufactured goods far exceeds sales of Nigerian products and this is dealing a massive blow to the country's GDP. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, in the first quarter of 2016, the manufacturing sector uh, contributed 9.93% to Nigeria's nominal GDP. Nigeria's Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index, PMI, rose to 45.8 uh, index points in May 2016, uh, compared to 43.7 in the preceding month. Now, this implies that the sector declined at a slower rate. Uh, maybe you should explain our guest here uh, what exactly this PMI is uh, so that we have a clear picture of it and then we can, uh, you know, talk about other things. The index. I, for me, I don't want to dwell so much on the PMI mm. because the indexes are relative. Figures you get depend largely on whatever you get from the field when you do your research. Okay. okay. The truth is that the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria has actually even established an, an, an economic research arm for analysis of these indexes because sometimes they wonder where the National Bureau of Statistics gets those gets figures, some of from. figures mm. from. Just like, you know, some people are wondering where, the, you know, the, the latest uh, um, South Africa overtaking Nigeria, Nigeria. where do, the, what did criteria? we... Yeah, yes, exactly, well, exactly the criteria what is, the criteria is. In terms is. of, it's, it's, it's currency-based, mm -hmm. not really output-based. It's based on currency, like I said before. The rand gained 16 percent against the dollar. Mm -hmm. Naira lost a third of its value because of the removal of the currency pair. And within two, three weeks, it was an automatic rebasing based on currency. There are now other different indices which you could use to say mm -hmm. Nigeria's economy is actually mm -hmm. larger than South But at, at the time, Niger in 2014, when Nigeria was rebased and yeah. it became number one, it, it wasn't that the currency, the Nigerian Naira, was that strong when it comes to comparison with with the South African rand. That is correct. That was based on. GDP, okay. the full output. 
Nigeria's dollar was then about hovering between 160 naira to dollar, mm -hmm. there about to 170. Yes. Between the parallel market and the the bank rate. Now, you remember that the creative industry and the tourism industry was added yes. for, mm. into the rebasing mm. so that their own contribution to GDP now became more significant. For the first time. For the first really? time mm. and now rose. Yeah. And that sector is the fastest growing sector in the country today, the creative and entertainment mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. it, in terms of contribution to GDP, it may not be so large, but in terms of the growth index, the music, fashion, mm. and Movies. all that. So, but like I said, I see, I see dovetail back to manufacturing. There are about 120 South African companies in this country. 120. Mm. Many of them are, so a number of them are in manufacturing. If you hear their stories about the difficulty of doing business in this country compared with the ease of doing business in their own country, mm. when you have ease of getting your raw materials in, it's a supply chain. Mm. You start from the beginning to get the letter of credit done availability of foreign exchange. The primary problem that many manufacturers in this country today is the first stage of the supply chain. They're not having access to forex. Hmm. I know of companies that since January have been trying to get LCs confirmed. You don't have sufficient currency. Secondly, the volatility of the Naira against the dollar does not allow for even medium-term planning because of long-term planning. Now, you have, you have, you have your form M approved, you now want to import. A lot of banks in the international financial world mm -hmm. are very careful with Nigerian letters of credit mm. because they're losing credibility out there. Look at our BB rating. Is it a matter of credibility or the fact that you know you have this uh, policy uh, somersault? Who has some policy have somersault is a major it. issue. Yes, you know you 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 come up with uh, pegging. Uh, the naira, the naira is it the dollar yeah. as it were and then you you decide again to That's float it and, and all of that mm. how does that affect the uh, f you know foreign direct investment that we we keep uh, talking many about many final investment decisions fids are on hold the rate at which many international financiers who had agreed to do equity financing for projects in this country mm. from infrastructure to manufacturing many of them are changing so no we don't want to do equity financing want to do loans to you hmm. because the political risk scenario yes. the government policies of policies of assault cannot allow us to plan and we've got shareholders to report to so that's exactly what what's happening a lot of fids on hold and if the foreign direct investment does not come in your gdp does not grow so you find even so, so a lot of big time manufacturing is on hold now back to the supply chain you you, you now import your cargo it comes it, it comes into the country we used to have port congestion before, mm -hmm. but now, when you go to the seaports, there's a 75 drop percent drop in cargo imports. That's massive. Mm -hmm. Shipping lines are sacking, port terminal operators are sacking, and then out of the blue, three months ago, the shipping operators and the port terminal operators raised their charges. So as they raised their charges, the, the, some of them by 500 percent, some of them by 1,000 percent, without approval from the transport ministry, as far as we know. That affects the input for manufacturing. Now, the most surprising aspect is that the government is saying they want to focus on export, mm -hmm. agricultural goods, manufactured mm -hmm. goods to earn income. The, the extent to which manufacturers are manufacturing, you want to now do export. The shipping and term, the terminal operators now introduce new charges for export, which were not there before. So, is it are you are you saying you want to sabotage the government's export plan? And that adds to the cost of doing what? Of exporting the goods. How competitive will, be, will Nigeria's manufactured products be out there with the others, which you don't find in South Africa? So right, South, let's South Africa has a stable, hmm. they have stable government policies. A consistent one. Consistent ones. Their judicial system to enforce the legal framework is insulated hmm. from political interference. So you find that you can plan medium term, short term, long term, term, long term, because you know that the government policies there will not be some assault. Now look at what the CBN has done. Today there's one policy, tomorrow there's another. Now how do manufacturers plan with that? Then power. Aliko Dangote has announced that in the fourth quarter of this year, hmm. his, his cement manufacturing plants, which are probably the large, largest in the world, is going to move from gas powering to powering by coal. He wants to mine coal in Kogi State. 
Why? You see what has happened in the Niger Delta, blowing up gas pipelines. So you have a shortage of gas supplies to the power sector. So they cannot generate enough electricity for the manufacturers to utilize. So they have to look for better ways, more secure power sources. So mm. all these issues are affecting the Nigeria's manufacturing output. Mm. And at the end of the day, you may find a, re a drastic reduction in their contribution to the gross domestic product at the end of this year. Okay. Wow. Now, uh, uh, before we go into the areas, other areas I'd like us to talk about, yeah. when you, you drive on the street or on the way sometimes, you see made in China, some, so many things in our household, in our, you see made in this, made in Germany. Made. Now, in the context of Nigeria out here, in the minds of an average Nigerian, what is Nigeria producing and exporting where maybe you're walking on the streets of Ghana or you're in Taiwan, you see made in Nigeria? What, what, what is that? Is there anything like that? Well, Nigeria's fast-moving consumer goods are very much within the Ekowa sub-region. Okay. A lot of export, which ought to go by road, mm. actually goes by sea. Okay. Because of a lot of non-tariff barriers okay. along the, the West African mm. corridor. Mm. British American Tobacco, Unilever, a number of those large companies load trucks to move cargo to Cote d'Ivoire, to Ghana, to Togo. But along the road, you have a lot of, it's supposed to be zero duty because they're manufactured in ECOWA. Mm -hmm. They're powered free trade. Yes. But the non-tariff barriers you get, to a large extent, defeat the purpose of the free trade um, agreement. Mm -hmm. Now, but on the streets of many of those countries, you find the SME, a lot of SMEs, a lot of small Nigerian companies, who buy from Nigerian, mid-Nigerian products. Mm -hmm. All our locks, this our imperial leather and all that. You find them all along the streets of Ghana, of Togo, of um, Cote d'Ivoire. When, when you talk about made but, in Nigeria, are we yes. necessarily talking about 100% uh, input from Nigeria? Or no. are we talking about, you know, uh, no. a large component of whatever we're manufacturing coming from? Or franchise you know, companies. From, from outside mm. or what the, exactly do the, we mean? Nigeria does not have... Between the National Bureau of Statistics and MAN, there is not an, a correct index of the percentage of raw materials used for manufacturing that is sourced in Nigeria, mm. and that, uh, that which is imported. Most of it is imported. But that brings me to the other issue. Many of the biggest multi multinationals in this country have undertaken, over the past five years, five, seven years, have undertaken deliberate backward integration programs to source their raw materials yeah. here. Like Nigerian breweries, as an excellent example, where they grow their, 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 grow their barley. The question you ask, what are the government incentives? Mm -hmm. There should be deliberate incentives to support companies that do backward integration to source their local raw materials here. What kind of incentives? Tax rebates, mm -hmm. tax breaks. You should give them things like that, so that it, when other companies see that, they encourage to do that, and it reduces the pressure on the dollar, because everybody is asking for dollar to import raw materials. Mm -hmm. So when you have a lot of companies doing backward integration, growing farms, growing their raw materials, a lot of material, many of the raw materials are agricultural. You are doing what? It's a multiplier effect. You are giving jobs to farmers. You are putting money in the hands of a lot of SMEs. The farmer that farms hires labor, hires transport. He moves it all the way down to the company. And then there's more employment, job creation. Mm -hmm. And there's this new policy to make a lot of youth coppers move into the farms. So when you have a lot more companies doing backward integration, that's fine. So the Minister of Agriculture needs to work closely with the Minister of Trade and Investment mm -hmm. and the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria. And the NIPC, who is actually in charge of incentives, they're under the Ministry of, uh, of uh, Trade and uh, investment. Investment. investment, should work together to create a special package of incentives to support backward integration. Because when you have backward integration, you such a local raw materials there, it increases your profitability. Mm -hmm. Because you're spending less on importing mm -hmm. raw material mm -hmm. from overseas. Mm -hmm. Less fluctuation of the dollar affecting mm -hmm. your balance sheet. You employ more labor. The government and the country gain more from that. So that's why I keep saying companies like Nigerian breweries 
making better profit on their on their balance sheet. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's, uh, as usual. Mm. So, uh, yeah, certainly. L let's go back to how things used to be. So we have other other perspectives in here. Now I know Mercedes in Enugu, Leyland in Ibadan, and Star in Bauchi. You probably will recall mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. at the good. You will call that the good old days. Indeed. Let's focus <laughs> more on Pojo for now. Pojo Automobile Nigeria Limited was set up in 1972 as a joint venture between the Nigerian government and Francis Pojo with an annual production of 90,000 cars by the 1980s. Now that trend was later slowed down uh, due to the unhealthy business climate and the assembly plans started folding up one after the other. According to reports, PAN uh, now struggles to assemble Pojo Citroën in Kaduna with the capacity to assemble 240 cars a day. Mm. We'll, we'll call that Citroën or is Citroën. It's French, right? Yes. And <laughs> Peugeot is French too. And Volkswagen is Yeah, German. is German, <laughs> exactly. Now, analysts have attributed the collapse of those assembly plants to the problems associated with the importation of second-hand cars, popularly called Tukumbo. Mm. Uh, that's the one uh, very common these days. Now, let's also tell you that Africa's richest man, Ali Kodangut, is already bidding to buy majority stakes in Peugeot Automobile Nigeria Limited. Hmm. Rival automakers Renault, Nissan, South Korea's Kia Motors and Germany's Volkswagen have announced plans to assemble vehicles in Africa's biggest economy. Now, when we say Africa's biggest economy, are we talking about Nigeria now or is it South Africa <laughs> we're talking about? Uh, recently, Stallion Group made moves to revive the assembly of uh, the Volkswagen brand of vehicles in Nigeria. Now, Volkswagen Group's uh, delegation from Germany said the Lagos plant has rolled out the first set of vehicles which includes Passat, Jetta, CC and Amarok models uh, from the rejuvenated plant. Now, uh, if, we, if we have to talk about Nigerian now, Innocent mm. Motors in Nigeria's southeast appears to be the only indigenous company manufacturing locally made cars in Nigeria. Mm. Even at that, the cars still get low patronage unlike the other bigger brands. Mm. Now, would, you, would you drive an Innocent vehicle? I gladly will do that. Okay. Mm. I gladly will do that. The, because there's a new government policy that all government ministries, departments, and agencies should buy made in Nigeria, mm -hmm. whatever product they want to buy. Unless that product doesn't have a Nigerian manufacturer, they now look for the ones made overseas. Yeah, of course, it's one thing to come up with these policies, it's another thing so to actually implement them. Mm. implement them. Isn't that where, because I'm just wondering, do we have innocent, you know, uh, is the president using innocent? Well, well, maybe not yet, maybe but, not yet. Uh, <laughs> but I'm aware that for, for many of their mass transit, <laughs> many state governments, their mass transit um, programs, mm. they uh, place orders for innocent uh, mm. buses. Innocent recently signed an MOU with the Nigerian Air Force yes. to produce papers for their aircraft. Mm. So, and one or two governments, President Ambra State Government, I think, I don't know, I wanted to buy innocent vehicles. And I think one good news, you know, I think I heard is now arranging to manufacture tractors. Mm with the focus on agriculture. agriculture. Mm. So manufacture, not assemble. Mm. And if it does that, then you, it, that's going to be a good big boost for him. But one major problem in terms of manufacturing of vehicles in Nigeria, that was still industry. Mm. I was happy to read that uh, the Minister of Solomon has, has sorted out the legal issues with over Jokuta. Mm. Because we're not doing flat steel, flat, flat steel in this country. Which is a major component of, uh, for vehicles. For vehicles. Mm. So, the people who want to come in, the multinationals who want to come in to roll out vehicles in this country, apart from the steel issue, there is the issue of the national automotive policy, mm -hmm. which was tested, met a lot of resistance. It needs to be retweaked because it's, it's segmented into several years of implementation. Now, can they, can the current capacity? meet the Nigerian demand for vehicles. But can Nigeria really talk seriously about, you know, uh, the automobile industry manufacturing, if not 100%, a large, yes. you know, uh, say 80%, without looking seriously at Newe. We were talking about Newe earlier. Yes. And, you know, the, the ingenuity that's coming out uh, from there. And, of course, one is reminded about the Unilag students who actually built a car. A car and they're yes. looking at, um, in the next 10 years, according to them, they can actually achieve the electric, um, you know, uh, vehicle. A vehicle. I think they can do it in less than 10. 
because in this country has a vibrant, you know, the, the youth population in the country, population oh. index, mm -hmm. vibrant youth population, and innovation is one of the key things that comes out of Nigeria's youth. They can do that in less than that if they get the right incentives, the right environment, the right government support, federal, state, and local. Now, yes, Newi uh, has, um, as, which surprisingly, I've raised this issue at several fora. Newi has this hub for vehicles manufacturing, starting from motorcycles to vehicles mm. to cars, truck, buses, and yeah, machines. Machine, yes, mm. spare part for them. Yet, it doesn't have a free trade zone. Mm. It doesn't have a free trade zone where the importation of all those components, whatever the raw materials they used to do those manufacturing, comes in zero duty. The way you have the free trade zone like you have at the local and mm -hmm. other parts of the country, it doesn't, it doesn't have it. So that's something that even if the government doesn't remember it, even if the private sector doesn't remember it, the federal government, the Nigerian uh, Free Zone Authority should do what? Push to establish that. That way, you will find that the automobile cluster will triple its, uh, yeah. its output yeah. and you market that free trade zone and then you will find that other global manufacturers who will want to come in and, and, and All right. Now, now in, in pushing this further, sometimes yeah. we see uh, uh, ministers and presidents and so on going to other countries, sourcing yeah. for investments into their countries. Mm -hmm. Now, that's looking for how to buy and get them in. Now, yeah. what would it look like if government officials and government generally goes out maybe to Congo or to Rwanda, as the case may be, selling a company like Innocent, for instance, that is made in Nigeria as a way of an agreement where we should make supplies to some of these countries. How feasible are things like that? A trade agreement of That's very stuff. feasible. Right. What? That is exactly what European governments do for their home mm. businesses yeah. and the American government. When you hear sometimes for much of the earlier part of the year, mm. you find a lot of European governments complaining about the foreign exchange, the difficulty, our forex policy, mm. the difficulty of remitting their profits out. Why, why were they doing that? They were responding to the complaints from, their, from the multinationals from their country who are operating in this country. Because a lot of the money they make, they remit it back to their country. And that helps their own economy. But they're not seeing the remittance is coming. They talk to the president. The president now talked to mm. Nigeria's government. Part of the reason why Aliko Dangote became as big as it was was that in the past five, seven years, the Nigerian government has sold Aliko Dangote. They sell his Indeed. business mm. in other countries. If he wants to do business in Senegal, the Nigeria, he gets the Nigerian president, he talks to the president of Senegal. This guy is doing this, he wants to do this in your country, he opens it up. He was one of the first people in the top private sector in Nigeria to be given diplomatic passports. So that you move fast, you don't have to wait for visas for this and that. No waste of time, you fly in with your private jet, you go in there, you do the business. So, doors were open for him at those top levels. At some point, Globacom got such concessions as well. Mm. So, even without prompting, the Nigerian government should sell they are major company, they are major manufacturing outfits because that's the role of the, the government. Whatever profits they make in those countries, definitely they will, they will, they will repatriate them back to Nigeria, Nigeria. and that mm. is about the economy. Mm -hmm. So the Minister of Trade and Investment and his junior minister should get up and So he has his job cut out for he him. Has job cut out for him. Indeed, and, and, and you talked about you know, South Africa having about, I mean, over 100 companies in Nigeria. Yes. I doubt if you can say the same about Nigeria. You know, Nigerian companies uh, no, in no, South no, Africa? No, 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 no. Nigerian companies in South Africa are SMEs. Okay. Okay. Basically SMEs and they're small business. It's only a liquid dangote that bought in about 60% or into your cement factory. Mm -hmm. Truly, yeah, yes, people say there's xenophobia against Nigeria, against Zimbabweans in South Africa. Practical, basically because of the high rate of unemployment mm -hmm. and low level of education. Nigerians are ambitious. They're out, they're out there. So... Getting into the South African business um, sector, yes, uh, you're 49 on the global ranking. It may not be that easy to get in. They have their own procedures. But a little to the shortcut, he bought into an existing mm. company. Okay. He cut off all that. He has over 60% in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the cement manufacturing. And then other companies from Nigeria who want to do business there should also think of that strategy. Buy into an existing business and then, and then move on. So most of us there 
are in the small business in that country. Mm. Whereas here, to, uh, hospitality, Protea, even though Protea has been bought over by Marriott Group of America now, mm. retail, you have ShopRite. ShopRite. <laughs> <laughs> so you come to <laughs> pharmaceuticals, you got Pathcare. Mm. You come to uh, what telecoms, you got MTN. And talking about MTN, it wasn't too tidy the way what happened to them was handled. Mm. Key point being, never, ever politicize any economic regulation issue concerning a company. When you say politicize on the, on the part of the Nigerian, defined, uh, on yes, the Nigerian part of government. Nigerian government? Yes, But defined. you had a Jacob Zuma coming into Nigeria at the time when all of this drama was going on. The Nigerian government. Uh, doesn't actually, that play a role? It plays a role. MTN, frankly, was guilty of a regulatory infraction. That's correct. Whatever it is that was the penalty was agreed by all the telecom mm. companies. That's correct. But it should have been handled strictly as an economic issue. Never allow it to get politicized. Because when politics comes in, people get their own interpretations mm. of it. And sentiments. Look at the number of companies in Europe that were penalized for the emission mm. yes. from their vehicles, yes. uh, in Volkswagen and all mm. that. Did you say it's politicized? No. So as much as possible, I know yes, it's a political economy, but you must keep politics out of business as much as possible so that businessmen remain businessmen. Mm. And then no, because other investors are watching, whether from Europe, whether from South Africa, they are, they are watching but how- some, some experts in, in comparing Nigeria, South Africa, and you know, looking at uh, the, the workings yes. when it comes to uh, collaboration or competing have yes. said, look, there needs to be a mix between uh, political diplomacy and economic diplomacy. That's I mean, these right. are the two largest economies in Africa and there is a need for them to collaborate on those levels. You are right. There is an increasing, dramatically increasing occurrence of joint ventures of South Africans coming into Nigeria to do business. Mm -hmm. They are joint venture with Nigerians because of our difficult business climate. We understand our own economy mm. and system better. So we're seeing a lot of those joint ventures. We need to see more of that the other way. We are not seeing enough of Nigerians joint venturing with South Africans to do business in South Africa. Nigerians are more used to, it's my own thing. I want to do it. So that mentality needs to change. The mentality is more in the SMEs. That's why I said it's more of Nigerian small businesses there. But when you have the larger businesses going in there, you see them doing the, the joint venture. So we should see more of that going that way. Yeah, but, but when it comes to talking about the Nigerian big brands, that, yeah. that, is, that is where one sees, you don't really have, you don't really see that Nigerian brand to say, okay, fine, this is the, these are the big brands, apart from uh, Dangote that you mentioned earlier on. Well, population-wise, we're almost four times South Africa's population. Mm -hmm. South Africa has 54 million. Yes. Well, they say we are 170, 180. Mm. Do I believe we are more than 200? <laughs> now, when, so, when you say they say, so. that even underscores the, the, one of the major challenges. Uh, I spoke to an economist recently, and he said, look, the major problem Nigeria has is lack of data. And when you don't have accurate, accurate, accurate data, data, it affects everything else negatively. Well, good thing we have a census next year. Even though we're already late in planning, mm. that will be held this it year. It was supposed to be this year. Uh -huh. mm. the, the former president never made a proclamation, so it never held. Mm. So we hope that when it holds, when it takes place, the indices will be better captured. The National Bureau of Statistics needs to do a lot more um, joint venturing with its similar bodies in the US and in Europe mm. to make sure it gets its act right. If you need to, get in foreigners to come and sit in your management. Others, management consultants, or the way. Because, like we said at the beginning of the program, data, data is very important for planning. And a lot of multinational businessmen need that. Mm -hmm. So, hoping that next year the population data will help us to take the, the population census, sorry, will enable mm -hmm. us to get in more data. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a simple example. ShopRite opened their new, a new branch in Ibadan last year. This was the public knowledge. Their projected income for this for six months. They made it in six weeks. Six weeks. Quote me. Wow. They could not believe it. They had to open a second shop right because 
they just couldn't take the, the <laughs> deluge of people. Now, whatever the National Population Commission may have as the population of Ibadan in their books, must have been rubbish by what was happening <laughs> in that place. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Indeed. you see, look at the lucky uh, on the lucky axis. Mm -hmm. They've opened the second About shop right now. About three or so. Aha. Uh -huh. So, why are you saying people say Lagos is twenty million? I say definitely more than twenty million of, of people. So that's and uh, now with that, Walmart is Nigeria mm. wanted to open up as well. So, mm. the population index in this in this in this country, the data uh, need to be upgraded because it's a very major component as an economic indicator. Okay. For, for businesses. Well, Dr. Mm. Ike Nangwosu, uh, council member of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, it's really an interesting morning with you. Thank, Thank you for coming. Thank you, Thank you very so much. much. Thank you. My pleasure. It's all right.